Okay, so the next data set that we're going to be analyzing is subdomains. And, you know, subdomains are pretty simple, but often I think overlooked by analysts, especially ones who are a bit more seasoned because they don't think to explore all of these routes. But for a subdomain, all we're saying here is that passivetotal.org is our, our root domain, maybe our primary domain. Uh, and the sub is anything that extends beyond that. So looking at the tab of results here, um, we have some examples where um, api.passivetotal.org or www.passivetotal.org. That API or www is the subdomain that we're looking at. Now, what's particularly interesting about subdomains is that they really give you an understanding of all of the different uh, observations that have taken place. So, for example, uh, you know, looking at the, the tab here, there's a number of different subdomains that, that reveal a bit about the infrastructure. There's, uh, you know, things associated with beta, associated with app, uh, you know, name servers that we've set up, uh, or potentially nodes. And so the subdomains themselves are, are leaking out pieces of information that uh, as a, a defender or an attacker, I might be able to use to my advantage to figure out how built up this infrastructure is. And when you're investigating a, a threat, it might be on a shared infrastructure domain, and that subdomain might have matched your own company, yeah. where the attack was... Uh, targeting you, but with your company name on some other domain. Yeah, believe it or not, uh, some attackers will actually go and put the company in which they're targeting directly in the subdomain as a way to keep themselves organized. Mm -hmm. uh, and in doing so, they actually reveal the, who they're going after and oftentimes the targets. Now, we're not always as lucky for that, um, but it is an avenue worth exploring. It's also worth exploring cases, too, where the subdomains are highly unique uh, because those subdomains might... Uh, reveal, uh, you know, a common theme or, you know, if the, a, a good example that I like to pick is www log, or, or login.paypal.com.evil.com. Mm -hmm. You know, subdomains are not restricted to just one level. They could keep on going all the way through. And so as analysts, the most important thing for us to, to take away from the subdomains tab is that for every number of subdomains we have, there's a potential new piece of infrastructure that it's resolving to. Mm -hmm. So PassiveTotal.org may resolve to an Amazon Web Services address because that's where we're hosted, but app.passivetotal.org uh, may resolve to something completely different. Mm -hmm. And so what's important to note here is that every single subdomain that we view is another avenue for exploration. And we can bring together that resolutions tab, the passive DNS information, to find even more. It's those signals that, that are leaking out that link infrastructure together. Yeah, and, and so what we want to pay attention to is just the uniqueness of the subdomains, the count of how many subdomains exist, um, and then whether or not we're observing any dictionary-based words or words that might be commonly associated with authentication services or webmail or other file systems uh, where an attacker may be trying to emulate a particular website you know, seeing webmail.evil.com. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they may even go as far as actually putting a webmail interface uh, up on that server to just make it appear more legitimate. But subdomains, uh, like I said, often I think overlooked by seasoned analysts, but anytime you see them, you really want to go out and explore every single one just because it could lead to new infrastructure where that one piece, at one time that, that subdomain was set up, the attackers made an overlap to some old historic information and you're able to associate it back to them.